All right, we're gonna get started here. Can you hear me? It's super early. <clears throat> Clear my throat here. Can you hear me, Christina? All right, well, we'll get started here. Just let me know if you, you can hear me so we're uh, all good to go. Um, thank you guys for being so flexible. Yesterday was a holiday. Um, so I kind of decided to shift this to this morning, super early. Awesome, thank you. Kind of works out a little bit, um, I think, for everybody if they were enjoying their long holiday weekend. So I figured oh, I'll just push it over to this morning. And the last time that we met, I actually had to do um, post a pre-recording because of issues that we had, that I had electric wise, that I was not able to get onto uh, Wi-Fi um, securely at my house. You know, the storms, actually we're supposed to get a lot of storms today too, so. But uh, hopefully we'll get through this lecture before that happens. <laughs> Tis the season, right? It's always something. So welcome to week three live lecture one. Um, you guys are pretty much midpoint. So it's kind of like our mid, mid, uh, mid term of the mod. And um, I went through a lot of your, pretty much everybody who had submitted on time your week two work. Very impressed by what I saw. I have some examples to show today um, of, your work, I pulled some um, to take a look at. And, uh, but you guys did a great job. I think a lot of the, I think what really helped was doing the template first uh, may have given you some inspiration for assignment two. So um, hopefully that was the case. Did you enjoy the assignment two work? Welcome, Melissa. Very good. Yeah, I think it's just a different type of a design. You know, when we're doing infographic design, it's a little bit different than, a, you know, regular, like an ad layout, obviously. Uh, so there's different things that you have to kind of keep, keep in mind. Um, but I think a lot of you guys did a great job. And then your assessment to hopefully kind of open your eyes to different methods, like it, the different bar graphs. So if you weren't able to really experiment with those with your assignments, you were able to do so for the assessment, so. Any questions from last week? Questions, comments? I'm waking up here, guys. I'm trying to, I'm trying to uh, get my voice <laughs> up to par here with my coffee this morning. Did everybody have a nice long weekend? Picnics? What did everybody do? Relax. I had a nice relaxing day yesterday, which was pretty, pretty nice to have. Did you, anybody go swimming? Yard work. There you go. Okay. Nice. Spend time with friends. Yep. Yeah, good. Yeah, my my best friend actually had a picnic on Saturday, so that was that was actually really nice. And then um, we were able to go swimming yesterday, so kind of kind of cool. Oh, okay, cool, very cool. So you guys all got together. Awesome. Yeah, it's kind of bittersweet, right? But at least you guys were able to get together, which is good. All right, well, onwards and upwards as we get into m more warmer weather here. You guys, um, I know it's hard to focus, you know, with um, school, but you guys hopefully will be um, ending this class strong. And uh, let's go ahead and get, go forward. All right, so what we're gonna do is um, today, we're just gonna go over, I'll show you some examples from project two work, assignment two, um, from this class, so we can take a look at what other people have done. Um, we're gonna just do a week three overview, just like we usually do every week. 
um, we're going to take a look at your discussion three and then your assignment three we're going to be um, going an overview over that and then planning the design and we're going to talk about user experience and human-centered design which is basically what you guys are going to be getting involved in this next two weeks of this class all right so you can probably hear my clock here chiming <laughs> um, just a couple announcements here um, just make sure that you are reading the announcements because I just posted something recently about late work um, there were uh, there are a number of you who still have not submitted either assignment one or assignment two or both and um, I decided to uh, extend the olive branch to see if maybe I can get you guys to get you know get your work in as soon as possible um, because I do want you guys to succeed I know a lot of you guys have life situations going on and you have been in contact with me which is great so I can be more flexible with you so that's kind of why I decided to extend the um, penalty free week one and two assignments because typically um, if you're over a week late with your deadline I can't accept it but um, because of it seems like a lot of you guys are pretty much keeping me in the loop for the most part and having some situations I wanted to kind of get grant that to you guys so my announcement was assignment one and assignment two if you have not re uh, submitted those of, as of yet um, I'm giving kind of like a opportunity to submit those before this Wednesday so really uh, tomorrow right before midnight guys get that in I will accept it I won't you know penalize you for being late and I will grade your work so make sure you're getting assignment one and assignment two in discussions are a little different um, you can you can write your initial post you just won't get the response um, points because you know once once a discussion's done nobody's going to go back and read and respond to your post so you know you can you can get the initial post points but the response points obviously are not going to be counted um, and it's just important to, to realize that you know discussions you need to really do those during the week that it's due to gain the most that you can from it just from participation alone so all right all right so your assignment to review you guys were to create um, uh, an infographic from scratch and it seemed like a lot of you guys did a really great job in doing this this is some some points to talk about um, but things to think about is it a cohesive story now that's what an infographic if you don't have a cohesive story it's not you know it's kind of disconnected then it fails to visually communicate um, effectively so the story as we kind of talked about in the last lectures it needs to a story has to have a beginning a middle and an end so if yours did not have that and it's not unified you know obviously it's not as effective so just kind of keep that in mind context matters so what's inside the information matters um, and that it's clear visually and verbally supportive supportively clear to those who are looking at you know the infographic itself keep text to a minimum you don't want to put a whole bunch of text on there um, it just kind of clutter, clutters it up overwhelms it makes it too hard to follow um, so you want to keep it simple and that's just you know just to be more effective to the people that are viewing it that's the whole idea of an infographic you don't really want to sit there and read a whole bunch of information you want to get it right away avoid big numbers um, so you know just kind of think about the information that you are provided and what you can do with it I know you guys were given um, you know a lot of information for this infographic and, and you guys did a great job with with showing that effectively um, graphing graphs related to the information I had some of you struggle with this where you know everything looked great and unified but then there was that one graph that popped out and it was like kind of like okay here's the oddball he doesn't quite fit into the style or the story that's being told so you can really kind of 
you know, you want to make sure that that all kind of unifies and goes together. So it's not so, you know, awkward looking to the point where it's like, does this actually belong on here? Or is this just pasted in here? So make sure you're, you're kind of following that um, unification of your information. Don't forget, you know, we are um, always looking at things in regards to, does it have enough contrast? You know, the, the principles and rules of design, does, your, does it have enough contrast? Some of you guys lack that with some of your body copy with the background image, you know, kind of got lost. Make sure there's enough contrast so that information isn't lost or hard to read. Hierarchical order is super important in every layout, but especially in an infographic, because if you have everything has the same emphasis, you know, everything is emphasized, everything's the same size, the same boldness, um, you, the eye doesn't know where to start to look at first. So you get kind of confused when you look at it. Where am I, where, where am I supposed to look at first, second, third? So you have to have, the story has to start with the beginning. That's where it should be more emphasized, middle and the end. So it should follow this path visually and hierarchy is uh, one of the key components to that effective hierarchy. Accuracy in the information, relevance to the information, and truth behind it is also something to think about when we're looking at the facts and figures in an infographic. You know, obviously, if something's way off, say if a bar graph that you're trying to explain is not quite looking like the percentage that you have listed, it's going to be an issue. So, all right. So, we kind of talked about this before in the last lecture just design pointers, um, value and contrast, consistency and repetition to make accurate connections. A lot of you guys did a great job with your elements with that. Um, and then, just, you know, there's different ways that you can create hierarchy. It doesn't mean that you have to make it, you know, the most, the most, Important information doesn't always have to be the biggest. It could be more, it could be a brighter color. Um, it can be the position of which you have it. Um, contrast. So there's other, other things that you could do as well. Repetition for consistency. So this is just so, you know, keeping the fonts and the sizes and alignment um, consistent helps with repetition um, so that the eye can travel easily. Um, you know, just kind of pay attention to your alignment. That was a big thing too, because, you know, we have so much information for this infographic. If it's not aligned correctly, and it's just kind of floating around, it's gonna be harder to follow. So having a grid structure, some type of alignment is to organize that information, just like in any other design, um, is really important for effective uh, messages visually. Um, stroking fonts. Oh, I've had some of you guys kind of put some strokes on type. And what that means is, you know, the fill, when you fill your color, you know, typically when you type out your, your copy, it's black and then you can change the color. The outline is really your stroke. You don't really want to put a stroke on any type of, uh, of a, uh, any type of type. Sometimes you can get away with it for big headlines for certain purposes. But the reason why you want to avoid it is it's just because it makes it harder to read. It affects the letter forms in your font, making it harder to read. There's a reason why typefaces are designed the way they are, um, ease of reading. But then when you put a stroke on it, it really kind of affects the space, the letter forms. So it makes it a little harder to read, especially if it's body copy and it's a lot of copy. All right. Um, so revisions and resubmissions assignment two look at the notes on your pdf and the rubrics comments be sure to watch the critique for additional pointers we're going to take a look at some some good ones that i pulled for just so you guys can see what other people have done address any missing requirements see rubric uh, you can submit one resubmission for a regrade i will only accept um, if you have say a lot of points taken off you can submit one time for a regrade. End of module is deadline for resubmission. You can also, you're gonna probably receive feedback from your faculty advisor possibly. 
um, because you did send this out, ho hopefully, to your faculty advisor. So you can definitely make those changes too. And then um, you need to upload that revision to Behance. So just kind of FYI there. Um, you know, and that's a, that's a good point to make because sometimes we think, oh, you know, I got a grade. Now I'm going to, you know, the, the project's done, but really it's not quite done. You really want to make sure you're applying those suggested revisions, even though you're not resubmitting it or, you know, the class is over. You will be at some point in your portfolio class going back and re redoing a lot of the assignments that you think are the stronger ones. So you want to make sure you're kind of keeping up to date with that so you're not overwhelmed at the very end. All right. So just kind of a couple things to, to kind of keep in mind. All right, let's take a look at week three overview. We're going to talk about human-centered design. Um, let's go ahead and do a little review here. But before I do that, do you guys have any questions or concerns? Um, I know I asked this before, so you probably don't. Okay. Sometimes I feel like I'm just talking way too much. So take a little break here. Have you ever heard of user experience or human-centered design? It's kind of like the big thing nowadays, right? Okay, good. And it is kind of all about the experience, really, like your, your overall experience as a consumer, as a target audience, um, and how that experience goes, ties into um, any type of, um, media medium that you are you know experiencing like for instance we're going to be doing a kiosk um so thinking about the that whole experience you know what makes it effective you know what's going on there all right so week three overview just the learning objectives that we are going to walk away from in week three is we're gonna define information design and how it applies to the role as a graphic designer or, or web designer. So information design. Um, design a set of symbols with a cohesive theme that will be universally understood. Okay. And then develop a cohesive user experience interface, UX, UI, that support best practices of hierarchy and principles of design. All right, so it just gives you a little welcome here. It talks about what we're going to be focusing on, which is, you know, we're going to study more about human-centered design and how to keep the user's experience in the forefront of our considerations. And then it just talks about you will start your second project by planning an interactive user interface and designing symbols, so aka otherwise known as icons for the screen. Uh, we will also be exploring different design careers and how each implements information design. Um, you know, something just really, there's a lot of jobs out there now just for user experience designers um, in a very broad sense, but, you know, um, that has become a big thing nowadays uh, in terms of, you know, the design industry. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at your week three discussion, see if you have any questions. Um, this basically kind of goes, and I'm going to read this because it's not too, too much of information in the background. So there are a variety of names for careers, educations, and job titles within the design industry. Graphic design, graphic arts, communication arts, visual communication, information design, UX design, IU design, and website design. The lines between many of these careers and tasks overlap depending on the needs of the company or client. No matter what your job title is or will be, your job is basically about communicating some type of information and the goal for all these types of designers is to do that effectively, clearly, and in a way that is enjoyable to the recipient audience. So what is information? So some def definitions are of information are Communication or reception of knowledge or intelligence. Knowledge obtained from investigation, study, or instruction. Intelligence and news, facts and data, and then facts provided or learned about something or someone. 
As humans, we are naturally curious and interested in learning and acquiring information. We are currently in what is called the informa information age. The start of the information age is connected to the digital re revolution and the birth of the World Wide Web. The means of how information is spread, shared, and transmitted continues to change. New technologies, user devices, and methods of interaction and other humans, humans and devices are continually entering areas of research, development, and commercial markets. So what is design? So along with having communication and information in common, all of the titles listed are considered design careers. What does it mean to be a designer? Simply stated, it is someone who designs. So what is design? The Merriam-Webster defines design as the following, to create, fashion, execute, or construct according to plan, to conceive and plan out in the mind, to have a purpose, to have as a purpose, to devise for a specific function or end. So some synonyms listed are arrangement, blueprint, plan, game, game plan, ground plan, master plan, program, project, um, roadmap, scheme, strategy, and system. All of these descriptions imply that something is being purposely planned. That is why the planning part of the design process is invaluable. Without a plan and a purpose, it is not a design. So user experience or UX is a popular acronym. You have probably heard it mentioned in design circles or seen it used by employers when looking for experience or qualifications. User experience is often used in conjunction with web and app design, but it is a concept that reaches all aspects of design. So basically it refers to how the end user experiences the design and the information that is delivered by the design. So user experience is a necessary part of all design work and ensures a human-centered design approach. So if you're kind of wondering what user experience was, that's kind of a little bit of a breakdown there. All right, so for this discussion in this class, students from a, different, a few different design programs converge as it is required class for both associates and bachelor level graphic art students, as well as those majoring in information design and web design, we have a unique opportunity to explore and share different ang angles of information design. Research three different professional areas of design. In this discussion, share your specific emphasis and explore the following questions. How is information design utilized in the different design fields mentioned? So, you know, let's just talk about that in general. What different roles do graph designers, information designers, and web designers play in distributing information? You know, how are they, what are they doing as far as that goes? How can the human-centered approach to design be applied to your, in your specific field? So, you know, even if you're just going to school to, you know, if it's not focused on web design and you're just pretty much looking at maybe being a print designer or both, how does that play a role in your, you know, how can you, how can the human-centered approach to design be applied to that, to your field? How can other design fields like gaming, architecture, fashion, interiors utilize the human-centered approach to design? So kind of thinking it beyond just your, your, um, your actual field. All right, in this week's reading, include articles with descriptions of graphic design, information design, and web design. You know, you can kind of talk about each one of those. You can use these for the start of your research and exploration, but there's a lot more information on these topics available on the web. Um, for your citation, you might use articles that explain the different design careers. You can also find articles from experts that explore human-centered design. All right, so just kind of a lot of different things to kind of, you know, kind of just discuss differences and then kind of go in with your own wor words and discuss um, how human-centered design approach to design can be applied to your specific field. Does that make sense? Do you have any questions about that? Some of you guys got started here. 
just think about, okay, just think about um, the process that you go through, maybe like the design thinking part of it too. Um, that you kind of have to keep in mind as a designer, like how, what does the process change when your, your process steps change whenever you're thinking about human centered design? Then that's pretty much how you're, you know, say for example, the kiosk. When you're designing a kiosk, you really have to think about how that person's accessing the kiosk first off. And then when they go right up, think about when you go right up to a kiosk, what do you look for? And then when you're touching certain buttons or you know, going to the next screen, how is that experience? Um, is it, you know, how does that all flow together? Is it clear, you know, kind of think about it from start to end. So the whole experience. So we're really just kind of looking at how all of these different types of job categories kind of come together, you know, in regards to the human centered design, you know, user experience design. Think about like a, you know, even like a package design. When the user gets the package, what do they have to do to, you know, to open it, to, you know, access the information inside? So that even that experience, you know, is all a part of it. Can the kiosk be a web application as well? Um, I'm trying to think, it's probably going to be kind of its own, you know, app in, in regards to, you know, I don't know, are you talking about being connected to the internet? Like what's, I'm a little confused. Oh, okay. Disney has a fast pass system and uses cab. Yeah, I think in regards to this, we're just kind of, um, we're not gonna be actually doing the back end of it. We're just doing like the, the visual part of it. So as long as you're kind of, you know, keeping in mind the visual aspects of the kiosk being clear and the next step that you go to, you're good. You're not actually gonna be making this like a working one, yeah. But I'm sure that's something that could definitely be looked at, <laughs> be like connected uh, online. I'm sure, you know, obviously there are so many different options out there for that. Yes, exactly. Yep. All right. No questions about that? Okay. Kind of interesting though, because like you know, sometimes certain things you don't really think about until you're actually doing a, a project or a discussion like this. Like you just brought up about Disney kiosk path fast pass system. So think about all the places that you go to. Even like, um, did you guys ever go into Sheets before and make an MTO made to order? Yeah, airports. There you go. You know, all the, the different um, industries, like the restaurant and uh, entertainment indus industries. Um, and it's not just kiosks. There might be other, other things, but kiosks are a big thing um, for user experience and kind of what we're focusing on for this class. But think about what makes them effective. Um, have you ever gone up to a kiosk and it was kind of confusing? Why was it? You know, so kind of thinking, thinking about those things as you're developing your concepts and ideas for this project coming up. Some are more informational based, some are more visual, you know, it, it really kind of depends on the situation of what it's being used for. All right. Yes, well, there's a lot of, that's a good point. Um, Christina said Olive Garden has a table menu that is at your table now to do your order digitally. Would that be considered a kiosk? That would be considered, I'm not sure if they call that a kiosk, a table kiosk or something of that matter. 
I'm not sure if there's an actual word for it, but I know exactly what you're talking about. You can actually order, you can play games on it. It's almost like a little, almost like a interactive iPad in a way without it being like an actual brand. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, just thinking about how those screens, when you actually look at that screen initially, what are you looking for? Is it easy to follow? So think about the user experience. That's what it is, right? Your user experience when you walk up. Is it clear to you when you look at the screen initially as you go forward interactively? Is it making sense going from screen to like page to page, screen to screen? Yep, like an ATM machine. Yep. There's so many different um, types of kiosks out there too. Um, there's ones at the mall that like you can interact with you know so so many different things to think about all right so that is pretty much the idea behind the discussion and just kind of get you gets you started thinking about um you know how it kind of relates to different uh parts of our field and you know what's out there today Okay, so it's not, you know, we're talking about um, there's in the in your media, and we'll take a look at this. There is a read called Why Human Centered Design Matters. You can kind of read more about that. That might be a great supportive resource to add into your discussion. What is graph design? What is information design? So it kind of gives you a little bit of, uh, let's go ahead and go back into Canvas here. Kind of gives you some background information that you can pull from. Um, for your discussion and just kind of learn more about human-centered design. Here we go, here, week three. So make sure you're reading through these articles. What is graph design? Um, it covers definition of what graph design is, examples of graph design, jobs in graph design, defines information design and how it applies to the roles of graph designer. So you might want to check that out. And then the second one here is why human-centered design matters. It talks about asking the right questions, using user feedback, working in a team, develops a cohesive user experience that supports best practices of hierarchy and principles of design. That would be a great article to take a look at. Um, these next two articles would be great for your project and just talks about the, you know, how to design a top quality icon, better icon design, which we'll be tapping into here pretty soon. Also, don't forget lindo.com playlist here um, goes into icon uh, creation. And there's optional IDEO. If you ever checked out IDEO, it's great. They're such a great, uh, a great company here, but they talk about the six steps to human centered design process, how to make people, things people want, um, information design, there's still a lot of information here you can pull from for week three. All right, so don't forget about that, that information, that the resources in there that could be very helpful. All right. No questions, we'll go ahead and go forward here. So basically for assignment three, you guys are going to be developing a strategy, a plan. You will not be creating the kiosk as of yet, but you're gonna kind of do, a, kind of like what you did in week one, you had a strategy and then you put it to, into play eventually. That's kind of what we're gonna do for assignment three. So week two project, uh, new week two project interface design. So week three, strategy plan and icons we're gonna be talking about. Um, and let me go ahead and switch back to Canvas because this looks kind of confusing until we actually get into your assignment. So let me go to your assignment three. And again, planning your user-friendly interface. 
we're going to be, um, you could go ahead and read about the planning, the user, user interface, kind of like the plan behind it, and effective icon design and what makes it effective. I'm gonna go right to the prompt here, zoom in. So your assignment this week is to start the design process for an interactive kiosk at a large superstore. This will be a two week project with the final design and presentation due for your assignments in week four. So the project overview, the kiosk will be placed close to the entrance of the store and be used for customers to find their way around the store and be able to search to find the location of a specific item. This project is about making the kiosk user friendly and cohesive with a shopping experience and brand of the store. So that's key there. User friendly, cohesive with shopping experience and the brand of the store. You will have a choice between several existing chain stores. Choose one store from the options below for your project. Each type of store has five general departments listed. You may also choose an existing store of your own with your instructor's approval before you start. Just be sure it will fit with the specifications of the overall project. So you can choose Walmart or Target. And within there, this is kind of the five um, general departments listed that should be shown in your kiosk. So grocery, home, pharmacy, apparel, and electronics, if you're doing Walmart or Target. Number two, home improvement, so Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, the five general departments there are lumber, paint, tools, yard and, and garden, and electrical. Uh, if you wanna go with the more craft and hobby area industry, Michaels or Hobby Lobby would be your two there, and the five departments would be art supplies, jewelry making, yarn, paper crafts, and floral. So you're, you're gonna pick one, of those, one industry, and then one of those brands to, to focus on. You may want to choose a store that you are familiar with or can visit in person to better plan your project. You will be uh, using the existing logo and branding for the store for your project. Locate a vent vector version of your store's logo on Brands of the World site. Type in the name of your of the store you choose, and you may get several options. Choose the one that is the most recent one the store is currently using. Here's the full link here. You will be designing a minimum of four screens for your user interface. So a home screen, a location map, a search screen, and the search result. Those are the screens. A simplified store map in an Illustrator native format is provided for you. So you can download that here. You can customize the map if you would like, but remember it is best to keep it simple, clear and simple for the user. Focus on the required parts of the assignment for each week. Here are the assignment instructions. So you're gonna rough out the user interface rough it out. So I'm talking about sketches. You can do that by hand. You can do that, you know, on pen and paper or pencil and paper and scan it in. You can do that even in Illustrator. If you have a Wacom tablet or feel comfortable enough to do it in Illustrator, um, you could do it in that regards. Um, so you're going to rough out the user interface and contents of the four main screens. Consider the flow from screen to screen. Choose what text you need for each screen and think about how the screens interact with one another. You can even use, I'm sorry, you don't have to use just like a pencil, um, you know, in Illustrator. You can actually use elements too. It's just almost like a wire, um, what do they call that? You know, it's like a, kind of like a rough draft in Illustrator. So you're gonna just do like four placement only shapes and I'll show you that in a second here. Carefully think and through, uh, think through and plan the user experience. Use hierarchy and the principles of design to guide the user through your screen. Consider your own experiences with interactive kiosks and what you might find helpful or irritating. Wireframe, there you go. My brain's not working, thank you. 
yeah, it's like a wireframe or kind of like a um, a thumbnail, but only for, you know, a web, like for web design or they call it a wireframe. Thank you very much. Um, you're gonna design five symbols and icons to represent the department using Illustrator. That's one of the things that you will be working on. Um, to guide you in your symbol and icon design, refer to this week's readings on successful icon design. Remember to keep them simple and recognized. Use the Illustrator shape tools and avoid small details. To keep it simple. You don't wanna have it to be overly ornate. You wanna keep it simple. Use InDesign or Illustrator to lay out your preliminaries and plans. If you did hand sketches, place images of these in the document. Be sure to include the company logo and the symbols icons you design. You're gonna save the file as a multi-page PDF and you're gonna submit it as named as such and then submit a multi-page multi PDF of all of your sketches, icons, and maps, map layout for grading. So go ahead and choose which one that you want to go with. Um, once you get that all in order, you can definitely check out the Brands of the World site and uh, look up that brand. So let's say if you're doing Target, you would do a little search for Target. Logo comes up here. And here's their one more simplified logo, you can go ahead and click on that. Um, and then you can obviously agree and hit download if you wanna download this logo for use, and it's an AI logo. Oops, let me zoom out here. Do we do a hand-drawn? If we do a hand-drawn, do you want it to be saved as an image? and insert it into Illustrator. That's fine. Yep. You know, like I said, this is gonna be, it might be, yeah, I definitely would like you guys to start planning this out in Illustrator or in Design because we are in week four, we're gonna be polishing that up for actual pages that you'll be designing. So this is the, the vector AI file that I just downloaded for Target that I could use. Yep. So go ahead and, you know, choose which industry, I'm not industry, which, uh, which client that you're gonna go with and Go ahead and download, here's the map too. Let me open this up here. Download the, the logo, because that's gonna be obviously something that you'll need. Um, here's the map. Now this is just, this is a map here. I'll show you in a second. You don't have to necessarily use this, you know, design, but it's just kind of to get you started. Um, so, you know, it's just here for you to kind of use as inspiration. Um, if you would like to, to, to use this as a template going forward, you don't necessarily have to. All right, so this is kind of what it should look like. You know, your, it should be kind of like a wireframe where it's for position only. You know, you're not placing in the actual images in there. You're just showing where the images may be, you know, and you have maybe, um, you have your um, navigation, maybe you're thinking about your navigation in place too. Just very simple things going on here. Um, you could do that in Illustrator or in Design and or sketches. If you do sketches, it, she just asked about placing that into a layout, that's fine too. I would get it so that it's it's easy to, to go from, because in week four, what we're gonna be doing is actually creating the pages, right? So at some point, if you did the sketches on paper and scanned them in and placed them into Illustrator, at some point you're gonna be designing these, these screens 
you know, for next week. So kind of get that started. Start thinking about icons. You know, when we talk about um, kiosks, I'm going to open up some kiosk examples here, just general ones that you can take a look at. So you can open up all these here. Hold on. Here are some that I just kind of quickly pulled for examples. And some of these are way over the top as far as what you'll see here, but um, here's a kiosk here. For clothing. Let me go back to uh, this here. I've got more examples. Here is one. I don't know what this one is for. It looks like a uh, where you kind of pick your seat at a movie theater. Theater seating, yep. And then you can see how this, these two go together. Um, here's one very simple, a little bit more simple. I'm not sure what this is because it's not in English. <laughs> oh, I guess this one belongs. These are kind of a little mixed up here. Um, but this one belongs. So this would be the splash page, I'm, I'm assuming. And then it would go to this page and maybe this page for the kiosk. Here's one very simple type of restaurant eatery place that, that kiosk that you would come up to showing the two screens side by side. So you would select coffee and then that's what it, how it would show. So that's basically what you're gonna be doing in a nutshell. We're gonna show like the home screen and then the other, um, the other parts of your screen that was listed. You're gonna be doing, let's see here. go back to that. Okay, a home screen, a location map, a search screen, and a search result. That's kind of what you're going to be focused on. Kiosk kind of could look like this. this. is that merry way that we just saw. Kind of top, you know, the, the brand's uh, logo is up in the upper right left hand corner it's almost like a website in a way only you know it's, you think about it if somebody was walking up to it and actually utilizing this at a store here's another one I'm sure what this is for oh boost the final blend looks like it's like a coffee thing I'm not sure what this is for, but you can kind of look at the icons and how everything's kind of laid out. This one's a little bit more obvious to what it is. So you're gonna be, this is for like a, a restaurant. Um, here's one for clothing. This is more of a website and how that applies to like a mobile unit, not necessarily a kiosk. The big buttons are nice, when, I think, um, whenever you're looking at a kiosk, you know, obviously something very simple. And look at these icons here. They're very simple, but they unify together. They relate to the brand. The colors obviously all go well together and harmonize, but it's simple, it's direct, it's to the point, it's not confusing, it's consistent and it unifies. That's kind of what we're, we're what we want to do to make uh, an effective user experience. So you wanna keep it simple, 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 simple. So think about, you know, you might even want to walk into, uh, say, if you want to want to do Target, you might, I mean, Target's one of my favorite stores. I go probably once a week in Target. Go in there. They might not have a kiosk. They might. I know, I know when you go up to, I think they have like a registry kiosk where you can register for a baby shower or 
or um, a wedding registry. You can create a wedding registry. I know they have those. Um, you know, go ahead and just take a look at it. See, flip through it, interact with it. Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be using it per se for what it is, but just for this class, kind of get a general sense of how it's being used. In you as a user, is it easy to use? What's not easy to use? Think about all those different things and kind of go through it. You might walk, walk into Walmart. I haven't been in a Walmart for a while, so I can't say whether or not I've seen a, saw a kiosk or not. Um, but you know, maybe you know some place that has to go to the mall, even if it's not related to any of the, the um, listed um, choices. At least you're kind of looking at how everybody kind of designs their kiosk. You're just gonna get a general sense, be inspired by what you see. Maybe there's something that's frustrating that you wanna try to avoid. Um, maybe something's very inspiring about it that you wanna kind of take from it. So that's kind of a, a little bit of research behind before starting this. So this is your strategy. You're not basically, I don't wanna see you guys, like I don't wanna see any final designs for this assignment three. I just want to see that you're plotting and planning and have a strategy behind what your, your screens are going to look like. So this is just the strategy part. So choose a brand, sketch the flow, design the icons, start thinking about how you're going to make that relatable to your, um, to your actual pages for your brand. And then you're going to present it. And as we go forward, we're gonna actually design those screens, the windows. So study the brand, don't skip the steps. Oh, McDonald's has, has one, there you go. So, you know, it might be a McDonald's, a Burger King, maybe Starbucks, you know. I know, I saw, I was in the mall the other day and there was a, uh, an Uber kiosk. I thought that was kind of interesting. So you never know, it might be around. So study the brand, think of the user experience, consider the floor plan, and then keep it simple, the principles of design icons. You saw that one example I showed you of the coffee uh, restaurant place that had the very simple icons with the very simple buttons. And that's pretty effective, I think. Very, very simple. All right, I'm gonna take a quick five minute break here before we go forward with the demo. Uh, if you guys don't have any questions, we'll kind of take a little breather here. Does that sound good? All right, grab some more coffee here and I'll meet you guys back here in about five minutes.
All right, can you hear me? Got back from our break here. Grab some coffee, awesome. All right, so let's go forward here with your assignment three, planning requirements. Um, just make sure that you're having the four pages playing out your sketches. We're gonna choose text. Now, you know, you can definitely do this in Illustrator or in Design if you do that. Design five symbols to use. The layout should be an AI or InDesign, so Illustrator, InDesign, present a company logo. Um, save the native file and then submit your PDF. Don't forget to check out the rubrics too. Um, before we go forward here, I did kind of Google image search um, kiosk user experience design examples. So if you want more inspiration, you definitely can, you know, do something like that where you're kind of looking at different design examples. Here's even um, some trends that you can find on here. Whoops, let me go for it here, hold on. You know, some are more visual with just like icons that they use with a navigation on the left-hand side. So there's some really different, um, different things that you, can, that you can kind of take advantage of um, visually. Think about how the infographic information will help you with this too. You know, you're, you're, that definitely will come into play. Obviously you're not creating an infographic, but thinking about that, here's a kiosk here. Um, just the visual elements of that, keeping it simple that will help with your design. Okay. All right. So what I would suggest is, you know, start sketching, start sketching out your ideas on paper first, and then you can go into in, in, in the, InDesign or Illustrator going forward. Um, obviously, you're going to pick who you're going to go with first. And if you want to go straight to Illustrator, that's fine too. Just kind of um, I think the sketching will help you prepare, um, you know, kind of how you want it all laid out grid wise. But um, let me see here. Do I have my, I believe I use the project map. So whatever this size is here, let me show rulers. There's no set size, although you want to kind of, you know, keep it kind of within reason for this specific project. This is eight and a half by, let's see here, eight and a half by about almost six inches. That was the template given you guys. So I kind of just use that for, for my purposes for this um, demo. It's a nice size screen here so you can convert this easily whenever we go into your week four work um, because you will be mocking this up onto a PSD mock-up. So you know maybe a smart thing would be to do is look up a let me see actually if they provide you with the mock-up. Give me one second here. Week four looking ahead because I can't remember now. Oh, guys. Okay, right him mock up on the screen. Yeah, so you have a template here. So it probably would be good. Let me open this up first. This is in week four, assignment four, just to kind of look ahead so that, oh, this is an InDesign. Okay, let me open this up here. I didn't have InDesign open. Let me, let me take a look at this and then we'll go forward from here. I just wanna make sure we're planning this out properly. Um, okay, and here it says set up the document size to fit either the provided mock-up or if you want to use a different one, be sure to do the proper dimensions to fit on your screen. So you don't necessarily have to use this mock-up. Here we go. This is, again, assignment four, but this is the mock-up that you can use that you'll be placing that's the screens that you're gonna be doing here. So this is the size ratio. If you do it too long for this particular mock-up, you might have an issue. Now this doesn't mean that you have to stay with this mock-up. You can use, um, and this is just 
pre-planning here. Um, if you want to kind of take a look first at, you know, free PSD mockups for kiosks before you even start planning out your, um, go to images here. Your screens, you know, because the size might be a little different. For instance, this one here, if you decide to do this one, if this one's free, it's a little bit longer. So your screen size would be different. Okay, you can download, I'm not sure if it's free or not, but here are some kiosks that you can check out. So what you might wanna do is kind of like design, I don't wanna say design backwards, but kind of think about how you're gonna present this in your mock-up. Are you gonna use the one that's provided or are you gonna go search one that's a different size or a different look? That way you can get the, the same ratio screen size um, and you're not kind of, you know, adjusting it later on. Does that make sense? So if you're gonna use the provided kiosk, I would just stick with this type of a ratio here. Okay. Um, I, I basically created these in Illustrator. So the artboards are all the same size. I created one, two, three, four, five artboards. Um, and then I name them. So you, you won't be able to see this when I export my PDF. This is just for you. This would be the home screen. This would be location map. So if you want to do this, you know, a similar thing you can search screen, you know, for searching for. So the home screen obviously is what the first thing that you see when you walk up to the kiosk. You know, keep it clean and simple. Um, and then obviously you wanna show on there somewhere where there, the location map is to click on next. Location map would be maybe the store map of where everything is in the store. Uh, search screen would obviously be, you know, when you're searching for a specific product, what that would look like. And then the search result screen would be once you select that product to search, what would it look like the next screen uh, going to the next screen, what would that look like? Icon design is my last page. This can be your first page too. You can kind of, you know, do it how you want to. You can start your icon design first. But basically, I'm kind of thinking about simple icons that I could use for my overall screens, specifically to the home screen or, you know, um, and this could kind of unify throughout your screen. So, Looking at these different icons, I just kind of sketched them out right here. This is really rough, but you can kind of hone, on, hone in on this as you kind of start thinking about, okay, you know, I need a home button. What would that look like? You know, I need a location map button. What, what would look, that look like? Um, I need a search button. What would that look like? I need a, let's see, what did I have here? search screen button, location map. I think I had, oh, the logo. You can place the logo in there too. And what else? Oh, contact information, possibly times, you know, different things like that you can add in there too. But what you need to do is at least um, do five icons. I believe it says here. Let me see here. Oh, I'm back in week or week four here. Hold on one second. Five icons for your for this particular project here. And those five icons can relate to the screen, each screen. They can relate to, uh, yeah, it should be the five symbols and icons to represent the departments using Illustrator. Yep, so that's it. So start thinking about how you're gonna do that. You can do it very simply and then, you know, kind of evolve it as you go from there. So for instance, like that home screen, um, my home button, 
And just kind of a suggestion here, if you know you want it to, you know, look like a home and you're, you know, you can definitely go in here and do it from scratch, you know, use your pen tool, use your, your other tools here. Let's do a rounded one. So you can make your icon from scratch. You know, maybe that's something that you want to kind of play around with. Um, oops, let's do a, so you can kind of start playing around with that now, start planning that out. Copy that. Start planning that out now. Kind of start playing around with it. Oops, what are you doing? How you want it to look. Um. Zoom in here. It's not let me select this photo one second. I go to my direct selection tool here. Probably because it's a shape. Photo one second. I do a line. This is just kind of getting into the details, but I just wanted to show you really quickly here. You can start just kind of thinking about how you want this designed or, and I'll give you kind of an idea here if it's something that you want to do. It's just kind of playing around with the uh, with tool here. Let's give us a, Uniform. Pull up my stroke panel here. And put a cap on this. Rounded cap, and then the width tool. You can definitely round that. Do some really cool stuff with the this tool here. So just kind of playing around with it. Just uh, get the icons how you want it to be. Oops. It's like a mustache. Keep it simple. Um, this is kind of funny looking, but let's see if I can change this. It doesn't quite look like a home, but you can kind of do your own type of interpretation as long as it works for this. And let me go ahead and put a little door in here. And then we're going to use the, uh, where is the um, shape builder tool? Shape builder tool. And select this and this. My shape builder tool, I should be able to unify these together. Oops. Oh, yeah, I'm not crazy about the, the roof here. I probably want to redo that, but in, you know, kind of figure it out here. I'm going to do, let's see, one, two, three. 
triangle. What are you doing? This is like a weird looking house. I have my drag selection tool selected, that's why. There we go. It's a little better. All right, so it looks a little bit more of like a house. Keep it simple. Um, you might even want to do like um, circles around each one or, you know, something. You know, think about all those little details. So let's say if you wanted to do a circle, you may keep maybe this white. And obviously, you know, you can change the color, but this is kind of keeping it as simple as possible here for now, just for show of what you're kind of thinking about. Or you can use, and I just found this online, like I just did a home, let me show you here real quick. This is kind of like easier way to go about this. The only thing is it's not as unique. Home icon, just do an image search. <laughs> Excuse me, and I downloaded one of these home image searches. I went back into Illustrator and I just placed it in here. If you are gonna do this, I would definitely change this up a little bit. Go ahead and select it. You can do an image trace. And then all you have to do is hit expand, get rid of the background. So I would take the direct selection tool, your white tool, this is in Illustrator. Go ahead and delete the white parts out. Um, once you expand out your tracing results, you take your image from being a ping or a JPEG image into an actual uh, vector piece. So eliminate the background, which was my white piece. I just selected it with my direct selection tool and, and hit delete. And now I can go in here and access this, um, all the vectors in here. So I could change this up if I wanted to, like um, say for instance, maybe I wanted to take this chimney out, just go ahead and now I can do so, take my delete anchor point and just delete anchor. So you could kind of manipulate this however you want. You can, you know, maybe you don't want this, oops, gap in between here of the house and the um, roof. Take direct selection tool and just pull this down a little bit. So that's an easier way to do it. If you wanted to kind of use up an icon that you already found to kind of manipulate it for your project. Um, whenever you're designing your icon, remember you want to keep it consistent with your other icons. So for instance, say if this is the one that you're going to go with for your house. Pull this down a little bit. Huh, that's funny. Looks like a steeple now. Um, then I would stick to that same style for your other icons. Obviously, you don't want it to be two separate styles. You want it to keep it consistent. So let's say, for instance, you decided, okay, I'm going to pull this all the way out so it bleeds off a little bit. That's one icon. Then maybe your next icon, you would keep it very similar but you would just change up a few, few things. So, you know, maybe in this instance, this one is location map one. So maybe in this instance, you would just keep it very, um, uh, I guess abstract, yet it looks kind of like an arrow. What am I doing here? Let's do 70% smaller. 
no, that's too small. And that I'm trying to look for like the almost like the location arrow that you find when you're you're in navigation, something like that. So maybe that would be for location map. You know, thinking about um, keeping it consistent. If I have sharp edges for this house, you know, very geometrical sharp edges, I would want to keep that similar in all of my other icons. So, you know, it's pretty much, um, keeping it very, very similar. And let me show you here real quick. Your kiosk icons that you can see all have very similar style. You know, for instance, this one, it's all very similar. So you wanna keep it, you know, you wanna keep it consistent in that regards. You don't want it to look different in style. Um, so you don't necessarily have to do, you know, one style over the other. Like you don't have to keep it similar to to uh, the styles that I'm showing you. You could go and explore different styles that would relate to your brand, but keep it consistent as far as the overall look. So that's where the infographic Here's a really cool image here. An infographic kind of helps with that because it's you're creating these very simplistic, almost like pictogram icons, um, just like in an infographic, keeping it simple visually, uh, a universal symbol that everybody will know. You can always add uh, words to that to describe each, you know, say for instance, you know, this one, I might not know what this means. Um, so maybe somewhere in there you would have, you know, location map verbally supporting what this icon is. So the button itself would be there, but then also the verbal explanation of that button would be there. Now it would be great yeah. if you didn't have to, you know, obviously the icon would be great to know what it is right away, but sometimes it is a little bit more abstract. If it is more abstract, you need that verbal supportive uh, information in order to, you know, understand it or else it'll be like, okay, I don't understand. If, if I were to walk up to this icon, I don't know, I don't understand what it would be. Maybe seeing all of them together, maybe I would, but you know, it might be a little confusing. But some icons are definitely more universal looking, so you might wanna definitely check that out. Any questions about the icons? Oh, your power went out. Oh no. I just saw that, Melissa. All right, so you're gonna plan out your home screen. You know, maybe in this, re in this sense, maybe what we're doing is we're just setting up, you know, maybe where the logo would be and where your buttons would be. So it could be as simple as, and I'm just kind of drawing out these buttons, just showing the boxes where the buttons would be, um, aligning them perfectly. So let me see here. Oh, not that way. You kind of keep that, you know, being being a little bit more. Here we go. Um, let's see on the top. There we go. Just be um, mindful of being very, uh, you know, having everything aligned properly so it's not all over the place. Unless you're sketching this out, then obviously, you know, you want to keep it aligned, but there's also some, a little bit of freedom with sketches. All right, and then maybe this is where the logo would go here. Just give them like 
gray. Maybe you just put logo. So you're just kind of mapping this out and planning it out right now. Oops. Alt-Drag. And um, so you could put icon one, icon two, start thinking about that. You could also start thinking about buttons. You know, maybe there's some type of a button that you want to put in here. I would really highly recommend thinking about that. How would you get to the next page if you didn't? Once ago, on you know, click on any of these buttons. Maybe there's a help button down here. You know, think about that. You know, maybe you've walked up to a kiosk and you don't want any of these buttons. Now, where do I go? Maybe there's an, a different option here. So, start thinking about what the home screen is going to look like. Don't worry about the big you know the very specific details in regards to like maybe if you're gonna have a photo in the background start thinking about that but really what you're gonna be doing is planning out the specific buttons and how clear it is to the user you know how they get from one page to the next this is location map how would this look like maybe in this instance you're gonna show a menu bar up here And here you're going to have um, menu bar screen options. I'll just place very, very general in here, just so I know what that's it. It's almost like a menu bar up here. And then the location map, maybe in this regards, it would be where it would map out the store. So that if the consumer was trying to figure out, oh, well, where, say we're at Target, where would the um, kids' baby stuff be, or where would the homes section be? They could easily access that by looking at the map. Now, obviously, we don't have an actual map, so we're just kind of making some things up here. But that's the whole point of this, is just kind of you're getting those ideas down. Start thinking about, you know, I know it's a little bit more, it's a little bit early, but start thinking about the fonts that you're gonna use. Um, um, location map. I'm just going to put this in here. Oh, wait, you know what? Let me copy and paste from. Let me see. I'm going to do the departments in here. Something like that. guides on here. Hold on. All right location map, and then your search screen, how would that look, look? You know, how would that actually look? Maybe that's just copying part of this menu. You're keeping that consistent. Oh, and then you got to think about the brand. 
you know, how are you representing the brand? Maybe the logo at this point is, ends up being somewhere else. But keep that in mind. You know, maybe the logo becomes here or even down here, maybe a little bit bigger. But keep that in mind. You want to keep that brand consistent. Doesn't have to be huge, but it's there. So the search screen maybe would be a simple bar. Maybe it'll be an image here. That's where you would actually type in um, what you're looking for, and then the search results would maybe be here. You could keep it consistent, like say if you're using this like uh, cornered, rounded rectangle, maybe you do the same for these elements here, which I didn't, but you could. Think about consistency with that. So you can make that more rounded. Those little details that all kind of comes into play. Same thing here, keeping the elements similar. And then screen results. So maybe in that regards, we'll see some results maybe in a similar fashion. Just maybe a little bit bigger on the screen. We'll keep the menu bar the same. And then just make sure everything aligns. And then these would be kind of what comes up when the search kind of goes from here to there. Just some things to be mindful of. Some of these things will repeat on from page to page or should repeat. Um, and then your icon design should be another page. So you should have, you know, I should be able to see, um, it can be kind of looser like this, five, and I have six here. And you could do more than five if you want, but five, at least five elements, icons representing each department should be shown, sketches or a rough draft. So it's just the beginning stages here you're kind of thinking about and, um, you know, how that would navigate through each screen from one screen to the next. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? No? Nah? Okay. Just remember, this isn't the final we're going to be doing the final part in week four. So I don't really want to see this being completed totally. This should just be your planning stages, your strategy, your wireframe, your thumbnails, your sketches, your process. I want to see you kind of thinking and um, not really completing. So 
if there's an issue with anything going forward, it's easier to change um, and, and be more flexible. Don't forget that to guide you in your sim symbol icon design, and I kind of showed you a little, a couple things to think about. You can also refer to your week's reading on the successful icon design. Keep them simple, recognizable as well. Use the Illustrator shape tools and avoid small details. All right, so now when you're ready to, to you know, pretty much export this out as a PDF, just go ahead and do a save as, save it as a PDF. And you wanna do all your pages. You can do a smallest file size is fine. And then don't forget to um, take a look at that before you uh, submit it. Just take a look at the actual PDF. Let me open that up so you can kind of look at it here. One second. That way, you know, if anything looks out of place or it's not showing correctly, you can fix it before you recent or actually submit it. So, you know, it should be kind of similar to this in regards to the process of it. There's the icons. Okay. All right. So that's kind of the beginning process for your final project coming up here. Kind of exciting. Any questions or concerns. Oh, I want to show some examples here. These were given to you guys in past classes here. And I think this is, this is for your final project. This is kind of what this will look like. So don't think that this is what you need for this week. This is for next week, kind of an example from a student here. It's a search screen options there. Um, here's a Lowe's one, but it's an AI. Let me open this one up here. So this is actually done in AI, not, not, uh, I'm showing you the AI file here, artboards. So this would be the Lowe's screen. Now obviously this is a little different than what you guys are working on because you're given the departments to outline instead of what's being shown here. So this has this this project has changed. This is a student that did this a while back so their guidelines were a little different than yours but your icons should be representing each department. I just wanted to show you some of those examples. So you were kind of seeing different things that might be helpful, you know, icon wise going forward. All right. Now, with that being said, I'm gonna show some examples now that we're kind of switching subject, not subjects, but switching gears here, I should say. Um, I did pull some of examples from you guys um, last week, and I wanted to share these student examples. So I thought they were pretty good. Now, this, this is from assignment two, by the way, so we're kind of switching gears. But I thought it would be kind of nice to see what everybody's been working on. So this is the infographic assignment two that you guys were to do from scratch based on the information given. And I just pulled a few that I thought were, you know, were done effectively, visually interesting. Um, so you guys can see each other's work here. 
Yes. I saw a lot of very strong infographics. So great job, you guys. Some are very simple, just very clean and to the point. Some are just, you know, visually more, a little bit more interesting. Kind of neat to see how you kind of took that information, like in the pie chart information and converted that visually. So great job, you guys. Like I said, I just pulled a few, so. Good job. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Great to see some, some strong work there for sure. It's, it's nice to, to see what other people are working on because we don't actually walk into a classroom and pin up our stuff. And in this class, you're not necessarily even posting your stuff to comment on. So it is kind of nice to see what everybody else is submitting for your projects. Very, very cool. Very, very, very cool. All right, as we wrap this up, just tips for a successful icon design. Yes, great work, you guys. Good job. Um, before we kind of wrap it up today, let's just talk about, you know, what you could do to, to create a successful icon design. Um, again, the media articles are there for you guys to take advantage of. In week three, use a grid. Use simple geometric shapes. Think about gestalt, the positive and negative space created with these these shapes, you know, how can you, you use those effectively? Consistent design elements, you know, make sure it all unifies. And icons are not pictures. You know, think about them as pictograms almost. They're not pictures, you can't use pictures and it can be an icon. Must be recognizable. Simplified language crossing, crosses language barriers. So it should be, um, you know, universal, everybody kind of knows what that icon means. The process, research, explore, sketch, test the group, implement. You know, maybe asking people around you if you're, you know, sketching out different icon ideas, you know, what would you think this would be if it was on a kiosk? You know, just kind of asking people around you is always good. I always sucked my, my ex-husband in the, you know, what does this look like? Give me give me a critique. So you might want to do the same. And don't forget the lynda.com videos are in there talking about designing icons for the web might be very useful for you to start thinking about different ways to design your icons. All right. Um, before I wrap it up, do you guys have any other questions or concerns or anything that you want to discuss? We'll be meeting tomorrow. We'll be kind of going over some things. If you want to bring anything, um, you know, to kind of take a look at what you're working on, definitely do that tomorrow. No, we haven't actually had storms yet, knock on wood, but we're supposed to get really bad ones today. So I'm, I'm just glad I got through the lecture without any storms. And, you know, because I have a puppy here next to me and he does not like storms either. So even though I... <laughs> If my electric didn't go out, I'd still have a dog barking. So it was kind of all, it all worked out this morning. Hopefully so tomorrow, because we're supposed to get more tomorrow. But you guys stay safe too. And, um, you know, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. Don't forget your deadline for um, late work is tomorrow before midnight. Okay, so get that in. I want everybody to I want everybody to do great in this class. This is why I'm here. I want you guys, if you succeed, I succeed. 
So let's like help each other out here, right? <laughs> All right, guys. All right, well, enjoy the rest of your day, um, and I'll be around if you guys have any other questions. Thanks for coming in. Great. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks, Christina. Have a wonderful day.